Lesson 11.3 is about finding probabilities of multiple events. So this would be like um, rolling a die and flipping a coin, doing two things at once. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to calculate the probability if the events are independent. So that means that you have to be able to, be able to determine if they're independent or dependent. We will not be calculating for dependent events in this lesson. Um, also, we will be calculating if events are mutually exclusive or not and find the probability of that. So, let's start with the definition. Uh, events are either dependent or independent. The probability of two events occurring together um, can be determined once you know if they're independent or not. So independent events are events where the occurrence of one event has no effect on the occurrence of the other event. For example, if you flip a coin and roll a die, whatever you get on the coin does not affect what you get on the die. Dependent events, on the other hand, are events where the occurrence of one event will change the probability of the next event. So for example, if you pick a card out of a deck and you're looking to see if you get hearts, if that first card is a heart, it will change the probability that the next card could be a heart because there are less hearts left in the deck. So, here's some uh, chances to try this. So, if we roll a number cube and spin a spinner, would these be dependent or independent events? This first one, we would have to say these are independent because whatever you get on the um, die does not affect what happens on the spinner. There is no um, connection between the cube and the spinner so that the cube can tell the spinner, okay, I came up a three, so now you need to come up a three. Um, one event has no effect on the other event. Example B, if we pick one flash card and then another from a deck of 30 flash cards, um, the probability that the second flash card will be a particular card changes because you've already taken a card out of a deck. So these are dependent events. Example C, you select a coin at random from your pocket, replace the coin in your pocket, and select again. Now even though you've selected a coin out of your pocket and you're reaching into your pocket a second time, the first coin has been put back. So these are independent events because you put the coin back. Okay, so let's try calculating. So if two events are independent events, then you would calculate the probability of both events occurring by multiplying the probabilities. So if you're doing an and probability, you end up multiplying the two separate probabilities. So let's get some examples. For example, if you're at a picnic and there are 10 diet drinks and 5 regular drinks, and then there are also 8 bags of fat-free chips and 12 bags of regular chips, um, if we grab a drink and a bag of chips without looking, what is the probability that we'll get a diet drink and a fat-free drink? First of all, these events are independent. Whatever you choose for the chips does not affect what you choose for the drink. The probability of getting a diet drink is not affected by whatever you get for the chips. Next thing is we're looking for both events and, so this means we're going to multiply. So since the events are independent, the probability that we will get a diet drink and fat-free chips would be equal to the probability of a diet drink times the probability of fat-free chips. So the probability of a diet drink would be the 10 drink out of the 15 total times um, for fat-free chips, we've got 8 bags of fat-free out of 20 bags total, so it's going to be 8 out of 20. If we multiply these probabilities together, we get 20... 7% chance that we will get a diet drink and fat-free chips. In example B, what is the probability that you get a regular drink and regular chips? So, probability 
regular drink and regular chips would be equal to the probability of regular drink times the probability of regular chips. Because they are independent events, the chips and the drinks don't affect each other. And so we have five regular drinks out of 15 times 12 bags of regular chips out of 20, and we multiply these probabilities. And we get 20%, the 20% chance that we don't get diet food. Okay, so what we have learned so far is how to determine if events are independent or dependent, and then how to multiply probabilities if we're looking for both events to occur, so an and probability. And we're going to conclude this, um, this half of the lesson here.